you know, the guy singing in the pub and the songs and sport and all that. And then there's the four. I think there's seven, <laughs> seven and a four. Because you, you see that throughout the Irish culture. Like you have the intense uh, poetry and all of, of that melancholy. I mean, we're obsessed with death and grieving. I mean, you know, and if people, if you listen to people's conversations, it's always about what's wrong with them. <laughs> it's, it's like, honestly, it, it's just a soundtrack, you know? Yeah. Or you have the real happy-go-lucky, sing-song, you know, hail fellow well met. Yeah. So France, <laughs> France, France has been described as a classically four, four yeah. country. Right. All you have to do is look at Les Miserables, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of iconic. Right, bring him home. Um, <laughs> yeah. The other four country is Japan, and Ooh. that is a four because of, you know, like the bonsai and the beautiful rock gardens and this beautiful uh, obsession with creating a nice environment and beauty and all of that. So again, two very different looking fours, Japan, France. But, you know, lots of uh, film noir, uh, you know, there you go. That, that says it all, French film noir. Um, some have a compulsion to be extraordinary. Most have this that shows up as wanting to be unique, wanting to be special, uh, self-absorbed. And again, you know, as I keep pointing out, this is not just the four. This is all of us. We can all be self-absorbed, but in a different way. The four, the one is self-absorbed about being perfect. It's, it's just a different, you know, a different shade of, of the same thing. But it's, you know, but they can be very self-absorbed about their feelings. Um, the classic example from my own life was um, when I was at St. Anthony's in Kailua, there was a lady who was a four. And she was a very depressive four, very withdrawn four. And it was like, when I would see her coming, it was like this black cloud. <laughs> <laughs> and after service, every Sunday, she would always hang back and then always, like, you know how I stand at the door, greet people. She would come and start talking to me. And I would feel the blood just like <laughs> draining out of me. It was like, somebody save me, please. And one Sunday, this actually happened. I said, you know, I've got to go. And she kept talking. <laughs> so another five minutes go by. I said, you know, I really have to go. Another five minutes goes by. She's just like totally. I walked away. I literally walked away mid-sentence. Because I, I couldn't get through. I couldn't not. I just literally turned around and walked away. And of course, I felt awful, you know, being a woman. <laughs> but, um, but that was a, an example of that sort of self-absorption. No idea that, you know, of what what the other person is experiencing. It's all about they're so lost in whatever story she was telling me. That, uh, mm -hmm. Is he or a four? He or, I think so, yeah, yeah. Good catch. Yeah, you know, you can look at these cartoons. Um, what's the little one of the dog and the girl? And the football. Oh, peanuts. Uh, peanuts. 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 You know, you can look at those. Charlie and Brown. Charlie Brown. They're all, they're all characters of these personalities, if you will. Charlie Brown a one, though? Because he's always trying to get it right. I think so. <laughs> Lucy is an eight. Lucy would be an eight. Yeah, I haven't thought about it. How about, uh, has anyone tried to assign Enneagram numbers to like churches or religions? Talking about Irish, I was just seeing the Catholic Church. Oh, the Catholic there. Church is one so out the wazoo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, you have a whole set of, you know, laws, prohibitions, and then you have punishments. You've got punishments that go, you know, to each one. I mean, but then again, where did that come from? Well, the Jewish religion had you know, the 12 commandments that turned into 680 
uh, laws. So you have, it's, 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 that is the one-ish thing. It's, the mind starts to just splinter. It, it like gets more and more critical and then it just goes down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, I think that unity can be a little sevenish because if you, not modern, well I should say not our version of it, but you go back 20 years, 50 years, there was this obsession with um, the positive. And uh, we don't, you know, do you hear about the crucifixion in unity? Not often. You hear about it here a little more. But, so this avoidance of pain, sickness, illness, and just sort of, you know, um, slathering some affirmations on there, and, uh, you know, so it's a denial of the, the more suffering side of life. So, you know, you, you, need, you need to have a balance there. I mean, we have wonderful teachings, but they can be misused, obviously. Um, Methodism, well, that's very much a head thing, I think. So, I don't know. Methodists? Methodism? Uh, I would imagine that the Friends Society, which, you know, that's all about going inward and being still. Quaker. Nine-ish. Yeah, because, uh, you know, you just go there and sit still. You don't get into any conflict with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> There's no discussion about... <laughs> and anybody can say anything and you don't contradict them. You just go, okay. You know. Yeah. So I haven't I haven't thought that out. Maybe I'll do a little more thinking between now and next yeah, week. You know, I was raised as a Lutheran, and Martin Luther broke away from the Catholic Church. But what the church I went to was still pretty Catholic. We got all the sin and prayed yeah. for your sins. But on children, that really has quite uh, that has an effect. It can have yeah. a profoundly negative effect on children. It's yeah. just hard to take that in. So you know, depend whatever number you were. If you grew up in a Catholic setting that was yeah. pretty intense, you may take on all of that oneishness. Yeah until, you know, a point where you say, this is not working, and you throw it off. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Martin Luther is a classic one, uh, because, you know, he wrote up his thesis, and it's all that, and, and then at the same time, it's falling into grace, like it's giving up on it, and just, you know, God's grace saves you. End of story. And my church was a conservative Lutheran church, there are probably yeah. others in all the yeah, there are. There are two versions. The new Lutheran Synod, St. Louis, Missouri Synod is much more. Yeah. Okay, back to the four. Um, fours can paradoxically feel both shameful, fatally flawed, and unique and elite at the same time. And you can see how that can be. Uh, they're invested often having problems because... It's the intensity of the feeling is what the four is about. Whether it's negative or positive, where they're getting the juice is from the intensity. So like if you think about French haute you know, cuisine, haute couture, it's like all of that is about this taking it to the, the limit sort of. Um, so, you know, um, wonderful food, savoring, oh my God, the intensity of flavors and all of that. And then the beauty of interior design and wonderful clothing. So that's where they get their juice from, is from the intensity. Um, in their relationships, they can have a pattern of push and pull. Um, you know, other people seem to have it all, they seem to have to better than me, and yet at the same time, wanting to be in like a love relationship because again of the intensity of wanting to feel that there's someone who gets them at that deep level of feeling. Um, seek real authentic expression, values depth, hates superficiality. Yeah, so there, there's not much um, truck with, uh, they won't be going to Burger King too often, yeah. you know, that kind of, it's, it's like they want uh, nice things and good food and all of that. Um, can be self-conscious, feels misunderstood, and of course then if you take this to extremes you do get into the whole uh, depression and melancholic nature and suicidal tendencies. But on the other hand, if you look at some of the mystics, 
and you look at the writings of the mystics, let's take John of God. Mm -hmm. His poetry is all about love and the intensity. I mean, these incredible poems. Uh, um, Lorena McKennett put one of them to music, mm -hmm. The Dark Night of the Soul. I mean, it's beautiful stuff. I, maybe it's my one-ishness or my four-ish quality over there that I'm... I can go there on that, on, on the beauty and words. So again, like, it can be just words. They're, the intensity of words can... It's, for some people, they don't understand that. But like Emily Dickinson, again, you know, this poetry about death and dying and funerals and graveyards. And probably El Edgar Allan Poe would be another four personality. Um, so ecstasy, the agony and the ecstasy. And there is one of uh, Shakespeare's sonnets, I think it's number 23 or 24, where, you know, that's what he's doing. He's going from one minute, it's like, oh, you know, I've, I'm missing you and all that. And then the next minute, it's like he's flying high. And, and that's a classic uh, expression of a four. Um, they can withdraw, they can sulk. So it can be challenging uh, to be in relationship with a four. This is a roller coaster ride, it can be. And it can be pretty intense, and from one end of the spectrum to the other. So y you have to be a pretty uh, balanced person, you have to be a pretty strong person to be able to endure that. Idealistic imagination, romantic fantasy, sensitive to art and beauty. And that's, that's the strength of the four, is that um, this fascination with beauty uh, allows them to be very creative. And they have given so much to the world in music and art and literature and fashion and all of those wonderful things. Okay, so for those, again, who are new, we uh, know that each of the personalities has what we call wings. And your wings are always right next to the number that we're talking about. So for instance, here is the four. The number to the right is a three. The number to the left is a five. So that means that these are also um, qualities that you probably are aware of and that you have these also in, in your backpack, that you can choose to go there, or sometimes you've learned just to go there according to circumstances. Now, again, if you look at the four, the four is in the heart center, along with the two, the three, and the four, but the wing on the five side is in the head center, so they are not all heart like the three, they have one foot over here in the head center. So that will be a balancing uh, influence of the five, the head. So, um, and then on the other side, on the three side, that's also uh, more of a heart space. So, as we've learned, a number with a wing on the left will look very different from a number with a wing on the right. So they, they look different. So here we are talking now about the four who has a three wing. And again, the three is the achiever, uh, very organized and is very interested in image. Now you can see there's some overlaps there. Uh, this interest in how they're projecting themselves. The fours are already intensely interested in that. And so there should be some overlap there. So a uh, four with a three wing expresses creativity for its own sake, but also desires success and recognition. So that's good because it kind of takes them out of that, you know, more inward looking to more outward being, being interested in how they're coming across, are they successful, what's the recognition that they're getting. Balancing creativity and ambition can cause deep internal conflict. So their natural tendency is to stay in that feeling place and yet now they're being kind of pushed out of that uh, into more of a three-wing, and that can bring up then some internal conflict for them. 
uh, very self-absorbed, may feel superiority. So again, like if you're projecting this image out there, you can get caught up in that image that I'm better than others. And again, this want then to be seen as even more special because it's all tied up in the image. They may be perfectionistic and may have a strong one expression. And we'll get into that in a while, why they do that. And they pursue objects of envy. <coughs> so we talked about that, thinking that other people have it, I don't. And therefore, they can get kind of um, obsessed with people who have some quality that they think they don't have. Uh, more extroverted, with the three wing, more competitive than fours or five wing, emphasis on self-presentation. Okay, so then if we switch now to the five wing, we have, there's a drive for expression of unique self that leads to a quest of mental analysis. So the five is the one who's uh, the owl who's sitting there observing, taking it all in, cogitating about it, trying to get more information, more information. So the three starts, to, uh, the four starts to take on more of that, more of that mental energy. It's pleased to be different from the ordinary. Self-interest is dominant. Get lost in <coughs> fantasy that appears real. So we can see how that could be troublesome. Comfortable with life's dark side. So maybe, I don't know, maybe the um, Emily Dickinsons of the world are fours with a strong five wing. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Elitist and eccentric. So there's, there's a little touch of eccentricity about fives. They can be. They can be the nutty professor. They can, they can think of themselves as special in a different way. You know, I have this knowledge. I'm the expert, mm -hmm. and I'm not sharing it with you. <laughs> yeah. So, so the four, who's already feeling special, can get into that type of specialness and can push the edge of sanity. The fives, because they are introverted already, um, they bring more introversion to the four with a five wing. Um, and, you know, we'll get into this next week, but... Fives, uh, fives can be uh, very monk-ish, uh, Zen masters, uh, people in monasteries, uh, not interested so much in that deep interpersonal connection or emotional connection or sexuality. Very often fives will be in relationships where uh, they, they have intimate relationships, but often they'll live apart. Um, They'll get together for the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then it's like, have to retreat back to my pad so that I can get my alone time just to think and not be out there so much. Um, so you start to combine that kind of energy for four. So you can also, again, then start to get that withdrawing from society or from external relationships. But they are not quite as interested in image uh, as the four with the three wing. Okay. So, here we go then with the lines. So this is where there are two other points on the circle that in crisis, or when you crash and burn, you go to one of the other points, and you take on the negative qualities of that other point. And then we have the hard <coughs> point where you're in a really good place. And then you take on the good qualities of that other number. So, for the four, the, um, the heart point, which is where the four goes when they're in a good place, is actually the one. And the one is a perfectionist or a reformer. <coughs> so when four goes to one, they cultivate left-brained objectivity. So moving away from the feelings, getting a little more balance there, 
They sustain a focus on something outside of themselves. Because ones are very, you know, looking out and observing. And more down to earth, practical, disciplined, and structured. Because again, the ones are very disciplined and structured, can be. Um, channels the creativity. So they take all of that wonderful creative energy and intensity and they put it into something. Either in terms of career or being artistic or in a relationship. Has a heightened ability at healing and creative arts. So again, because of their sensitivity, healing, healing arts is often where you will find fours. This is a real it. Because they feel so intensely that they feel that they can understand and that they can do something for you. So the downside, of course, if you move to the one, is that you may get then drawn into the perfectionism and the criticism. So then, then you can sort of amplify that already four-ish, there's something wrong with me. Now you've got the critical one mind kicking in and that, that can be challenging. You're amplified. You're amplifying the already flawed sense of self. Okay. So then, when you go to the stress point or when you fall apart, they go to the two. Now we know the two is already into relationship, into feeling, into loving, and trying to get love back. Is you know the the subconscious. Um, fix that they have, even though they are not necessarily aware of that. So when the four goes to two, they deny their personal needs, just like the two does, and they start to over-accommodate. So in a sense, this, this is a bad combination. This is like you're, you're getting into more intense feelings, which is not great. They become overly dependent on someone to save them. So. This is the classic getting into relationships that are not good for you and making the other person, putting the other person on a pedestal. So, you know, that, that they can be so unrealistic about the other person. You would think the other person is like, you know, Jesus Christ or whoever. And then you meet them and you think, I don't think so. You know? <laughs> yeah. But that's this idealized uh, version of who they need to be in love with, who will take care of them and rescue them. So it's like a savior uh, complex, in a sense. Uh, at the same time, becomes resentful of the rescuing other. So again, then, when that person is in their life, and they course, they're not going to live up to the expectation, and then there's the backlash against that. Uh, tries to win others over, becomes more possessive of their partner. So you can just imagine that this gets pretty tricky. That if, if you're in that really intense, again, I can't think of any movies off the top of my head. Well, maybe Fatal Attraction. I, I don't know. I don't think she's a four, though. She's, she's too powerful. But like someone who's clingy and needy and now starts focusing their whole mind on the other person, and then, of course, the paranoia about, well, is this person really, you know, with me, or are they seeing other people? I mean, it, it can get pretty hairy, yeah. Uh, the upside um, allows for more relationality and external attunement. So it can take them out of themselves, because, you know, the two is looking at what are your needs and how can I fulfill your needs. Well, a healthy uh, going into the two like that and be, being more balanced about my needs and your needs, that's a good thing. Then you won't stand next to the person when they keep telling you that they have to leave and you don't hear it. <laughs> Hopefully you'll start to listen and hear. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay, Wendy, would you like to um, come on down? When, I mean, so when I taught the Enneagram before, I only had so much time to teach it, so 
I never really got into like some aspects of it, like the subtypes. And now this is a big thing for a one to admit that. I'm telling you that I don't know. <laughs> Whereas, you know, before, if someone asked me a question about that, I'd kind of, you know, I tried to weasel my way through that and pretend that I knew. So I'm going to pass it over to Wendy, who I know knows. So Wendy? maybe you can give us the overview of the subtypes again. Sure. Wendy. Okay. And, and I know some things. I mean, that. Wendy. Oh, can you come over? Oh, yeah. Here? So the, um, the Enneagram, if, if, if you've been listening at all to this, you'll know it's a really deep subject. <laughs> Am I in the perfect place? <laughs> Jerry? <laughs> um, so what we talked about with these instinctual subtypes last week is this alchemy that happens between the natural biological instincts that all of us have for self-preservation, for social connection, and for a strong, deep, one-to-one -one connection with others. And it's that combination of that instinctual drive that for each of us, have, we have one typically dominant instinctual drive, along with the emotional habit of the type that creates this unique expression of type. So for the fours, we have a self-preservation four, a social four, and a one-to-one -one four. The way that I think about four is oftentimes around this concept of suffering. The emotional habit of type is around a sense that I don't have what they have and I want to get it. It's described as envy. But there's this, this sort of a, a, a suffering quality to the four who feels as if I'm not alive unless I'm suffering for what I love. So for the self-preservation four, this is a type that is oftentimes mistyped as a three because they're long-suffering. They're very stoic. We call them the sunny four. This is the, the type that says, if I want something, I'm going to work really hard to get that, to bring it into my life. And I'm going to put a good face on it because I'm going to you know, basically make it look to the world as if I've really, you know, I'm competent, I've got this covered, I've, I, I know what I need, and I'm going to go get it. So this is, um, I'm trying to think of the movie Lawrence of Arabia, where um, Peter O'Toole, O'Toole, O'Toole is the self-preservation for. He's the one who'll put his finger close to the flame to see if it's going to cause pain. And they'll hold it there just a little longer because there's that sense of, I can do this. I can make myself, I can withstand this suffering with a sort of stoicism. So that's our classic self-preservation four. And because it hasn't really been talked about in the literature, sometimes you'll see it described as, oh, this is a four with a three ring because they can seem very competitive. But I actually think it's quite different than that. It's really about this sense that I can withstand suffering in order to really, you know, demonstrate that I'm, that I'm you know, capable of achieving what I want through my own self-determination. The sad four is what we would describe as the social four. This is the type that feels socially insufficient or deficient, as if I don't really feel like I can be part of this group, so I'm going to sort of withdraw a little bit. This is what we would describe as the, the classic kind of introversion that we see in the four, and it's a sense of I'm suffering, and if I'm suffering, then, you know, that's okay because maybe the rest of the group will want to bring me in. There's that sort of approach avoidance conflict that we see sometimes in fours. It's the desire to belong and also the sense that I'm lacking something and therefore the social four is going to probably more, be more illustrative of this type that's moving forward wanting to connect and also feeling that internal sense of and I'm going to be rejected. 
So it's that, that you know, classic tension that you see between those two polarities. The mad four, the one-to-one -one four, is the one who really, from what I've seen of the types, is actually the angriest mm -hmm. of all of the types. They oftentimes get mistyped as eights because they're very strong and out there. And we say about the uh, competitive, I'm sorry, the one-to-one -one four, that I'm going to make you suffer. Mm -hmm. So if I'm suffering, I'm going to make you suffer because I deserve to feel happy and you deserve to make me happy. So the, 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 I don't know if any of you read the Walter Isaacs book on uh, Steve Jobs. Yes. This is the classic description of the one-to-one -one four who was abandoned at birth. Remember, he was adopted by his birth parents, but always felt this sense of, I need to be better than you and I'm going to be really hard on you. And the way in which he um, didn't accept his, his firstborn daughter, yeah. mm -hmm. and he pushed her out there. He named Lisa, right, one of his products after her. That was his way of kind of acknowledging her. Mm -hmm. But there was a part of him that felt that she was not deserving of him as a parent. And so he was going to make her suffer. And again, this is all operating in the mm -hmm. unconscious realm for an unevolved type. Um, it's often said that with subtypes, we, we, this is probably an area of development for all of us where we can be um, most on our growth path. So as we let go of our need to provide material and physical security, that frees up resources to perhaps feel more wanting to connect with a group to do more volunteer work. Um, and then the one-to-one -one connection piece of it is as I'm feeling less needful of providing for my security, I'm feeling part of a group, I'm now desiring more one-to-one um, -one or intimate connections with others. So we can see as we're, as we're evolving both the type as we're moving from our, our core dominant instinctual drive, once that's satisfied, it helps us soften other attributes of type. So, Any other questions about the... Well, maybe, maybe you could talk about then... Say, say, <laughs> say you want to make yourself into a project. <laughs> say I want to improve myself. Say you want to improve yourself. So would you say then that you start with the wings, you start with one wing as opposed to another, uh, and in relation to the subtypes? Like, is there kind of a... A hierarchy. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy, that's a. I know, how that's, much time do we have? Yeah, well, we might have to do that one of the days. So, so if it's too much we can hold. You on. know, I think the the evolution of awareness and consciousness, mm -hmm. right, starts with first of all recognizing that we have an inner observer mm -hmm. that is separate from how we express, you know, how the personality wants to express itself. So, as a task oriented person as I'm running off to change the kitty litter, and my husband says, honey, I really need to have a conversation with you, that the, the drive to take care of that task, if I'm unaware, 